viewers. I just thought I'd do a video here with some power line sag and voltage drop. Go over the setup. I just have the 13200 transformer out here. Um, going to a single conductor, 7620 volts. Red is hot and white is neutral. As you can hear, there's just a hair of corona discharge on the suspension discs. These came off a 138 kV line that was decommissioned sometime in the 1980s. Going here to some new style construction poles. 7620 volts. And then it comes here to a termination point. Got a fuse cutout that came off of one of my power company's 13200 lines. And going into the 13.2 half kVA transformer. Let's see if I can maneuver around here. This is all live, so I'm trying to be as careful as I can. 120 volts coming out, going to a service drop. Let's see the 13.2 high side going to an ABB kilowatt hour meter and as you can see you got a space heater it's rated at 1500 watts it pulls about 980 watts and to measure the amperage on the neutral, accurate when first powered on. As you can see, pulling about 0.1 amps, so 100 milliamps, and that's at 7620 volts. Now if I turn the space heater off, you'll see it's not even measurable. And that's quite impressive. Uh, these transformers here are wound very well. And that's because power companies would not accept any high lossy type equipment on their lines. So very incredible. Doesn't even measure. Let's see some more experiments. To measure the voltage drop, have the space heater on back there on full power, pulling about eight amps at 120 volts. So to measure the incoming line voltage is 110. Keep in mind that the biggest loss is that 1 kVA transformer. So from 110 it gets stepped up to 7620. Comes in through this cutout fuse and into the 7620 transformer. As you can see the space heater is on and the meter is spinning. Fantastic qualities. A genuine shame that all analog meters are discontinued in the U.S. Um, even a lot of electric utilities would prefer these. They are remarkably reliable and efficient compared to the cheap made in China alternative. As you can see we're getting 107 volts, 106, 107. So we have approximately a three volt drop across the entire system. Keep in mind that that transformer there stepping up is extraordinarily efficient. That is a close one to one relationship if it's only dropping one three volts on the 120 volt side. I'd like to see that done with a microwave oven transformer. I don't think it would happen. I have taken the two transformers out of the circuit and the prior 7620 volt line is now just energized to 120 volts. So I'm going to plug this in. Now this is live at 120 volts. Now it's measures the voltage coming into the system. We're at 122.8 volts. Do not think it's going to be the same at the other end. So 
As you can see, the hot lead from this transformer comes down to a wire nut. It is going to be energized to 120 volts on the primary. However, that's not nearly enough to generate any usable power on the secondary side. Close this in while it's hot. It is only 120 volts. You can tell why these box type cutouts went out of style. Whenever you try and close them and you break them. So on the incoming side here, we have got 122 point, 123 volts, so no voltage drop. However, that will change once I energize the space heater, if it even will turn on. You can see it does turn on, however, it seems very labored. Uh, to measure the voltage. As you can see we're at 101 volts, 100 volts. This is going to continue to drop as the conductors heat up. Ninety-nine. So now I'm going to measure the line drop. Line sag with just the space heater attached. So you can see the conductor is currently just below the six and a half inch mark. So to energize with the 980 watt space heater. As you can tell, the conductor is very marginally dropping. It's not too noticeable without the measuring tape in the background. As you can see, it dropped just a quarter of an inch over this quite long suspension distance. I uh, scabbed up a second secondary service and I've wired it 7620 on a 13.2 system coming down 120 volts going into the microwave oven transformer stepping up to about 2100 volts so I have an ammeter on the pole pig this is live at 7620 volts As you can see, currently drawing in 3.88 amps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on hold on the 200 scale and draw an arc off the microwave oven transformer. Okay, maybe a few arcs. I'm going to go over and see how much amperage that pulled through the circuit. Let's see, 27.4 amps at 120 volts. So I'm going to put that on peak hold again. I'm going to do a fault on the load side of the electric meter. So that is still 20 gauge fire alarm wire. The green is the hot, white neutral. I'm gonna touch the hot bushing there. That is live at 120 volts. That's quite a spark, I'm gonna have to look through the camera. As you can see, burned it up pretty good. As you can see, 50 amps at 120 volts. 
that is quite high. I want to keep doing that because this transformer here is a little pricey and I don't want to damage her internals. But I would be curious to see what the fault current is on that bushing right there, probably a lot more than 50 amps because that current has to travel through the 20 gauge fire alarm wire, which has quite a bit of resistance. And I'm gonna reach up with a chicken stick and touch that unballasted 13200 volt, 7620 volt phase up there. Probably take a hand off. But that's it for today. I'll end it here.